tweet at Today SOR. Only a few days to go. You should be getting ready the wizards and beware the colics. This weekend marks Snap Apple Night, All Hallows Eve, All Hollows Eve and so on. But if some of these words mean nothing to you, the man joining me now is about to explain. Folklorist and historian Michael Fortune. Uh, we're talking, of course, about Halloween and you are curating a big event which is taking place at the National Library today. It's on until about 4.30 this afternoon and it's exploring a lot of the folklore and the customs around Halloween. So so, uh, let's start with wizards. What's a wizard? It's an old word we grew up with in, in North Wexford for uh, for a mask and it, t- it survived in North Wexford, South Wicklow and parts of Carlow and it is an old word that goes back to the 16th century and I think it was a, a wizard was a little mask that uh, kind of women wore on their faces to keep themselves from getting sunburned because obviously back then tanned wasn't the in, in the, t- the in thing it was to keep yourself looking lovely and white so the word managed to make its way to, to Ireland and survived in this little pocket um, and colleagues would be a, a, another word that would be used again around the kind of Mount Leinster area for uh, for Halloween people would say, say it's colican night it's colican night colican night and it probably comes from the Irish word colic for a hag or for a witch um, and I think, I think the term colic is used in Scotland as well as far as I know Really? Um, so there would be different pockets different pockets around the country who would call Halloween different names like in Clonmel and South Tipperary they would call it Snap Apple Night so there would be different names depending on where you'd go it's, it's fascinating when you begin to dig into it I mean I suppose if we come back it, the, the whole basis of Halloween it's the night that the souls of the dead come back so why do people dress up? What's the thinking there? The kind of the, the story we always grew up with was that on it was sound. It was the it was the period where you went from the the end of the summer into the winter, and on that night basically they, they said that the, the the evil spirits roamed the earth and the living dressed up basically with masks to disguise themselves from the evil spirits so to harm them, and also the the the, the, the souls of the dead returned and also again the, the living dressed up uh, to to fool them. That's one of the stories we grew up with at, at home in, in in Wexford, um and it's a kind of common one that kind of crops up around around the country. But the idea of disguise was huge important the idea of putting on a mask that was the real real power of Halloween so disguising yourself to fool the evil spirits was it that as I understand it that you dress up as a dead something in order to prevent the evil spirits from attacking the actual souls of the dead instead they come after you yeah just to kind of confu- I suppose to confuse them that was the theory to confuse them but also as well they said, they said it was just to uh, yeah just to, to, pr- to protect yourself as well you know that's the, that was the other theory the, the, it's, it's, qu- it's quite vague really but we just know that that's the that, that tradition of, of disguise is huge is hugely important and I suppose really the thing the reason why we're doing the event with in the in, in the National Library is to look at that whole thing that we here in Ireland it came from the, the tradition that we obviously we brought back from America now stemmed from here stemmed from Ireland stemmed from Scotland Wales Cornwall as well had it as well um, but it's a, definitely a, a, what you would call I suppose a, a Celtic tradition and a bonfire is very much part of Halloween as well was that always the case was fire always part of it yeah fire was a big thing fire was a big thing in 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 in, in the, the I suppose the Technically, the Celtic calendar can be broken into two seasons, the light and the dark. And the light would always be built in the hour, the first of May. And even to this day, people would still light fires on the first of May. I've come across women, a woman who said that she remembers lighting fires and running the cattle room and putting them out into the fields on the first of May. Um, that's only recorded in the last 10 years. Um, it's likewise the same in Scotland. And likewise, coming into into, into Samhain or into Halloween, you're going from the from the, the, the bright of the summer into the dark of the winter. So people lit fires, I suppose, basically to mark that time of the year, that turn in the year, as we're heading into the dark period, which we all are, you know, the evenings are getting shorter um, and light is getting uh, scarcer. So maybe But the bonfire, the, there is actually a theory, I don't know if it's a theory or a fact, that the, the bon is actually bone, that there were fires of bones at this time. Yeah, well, it's, I've, I've come across loads of record. My own grandmother at home would always call it, and loads of older people would call it a bone fire rather than a bonfire. They'll always say, oh yeah, the bone fire. And I've, again, I've recordings of people will say that they remember going out with children collecting bones collecting a bone actually getting going out being sent as children go to collect a bone throw a bone onto the bonfire like from animal bones an animal bone yeah yeah. so just again again, it's just theories abounding whether it goes back to cremation it goes back to I don't know you know uh, some people say it was go back to fires due to the plague and black deaths and things like that I don't know for exactly but I just know for, uh, for me I'm interested in things that are alive still and what people can remember and uh, but yeah but you will and just, bones were a thing yeah, and Tinnacanov in Irish. Irish and that that it translates as fire of bones yeah, as well yeah yeah 
That's that's very interesting. So there must be something in in all of that. So the thirty first is the night you you, you dress up and uh, you ward off the evil spirits. But it goes on on the first and the second. So you've discovered some really interesting stuff about those two days recently. Yeah, well, the, the I suppose with 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 the church and with Christianity, with uh, all saints and all souls, they developed based on the on the, the pre Christian festival. Um, but all soul all souls, I know that again, I've recorded some known, my own experience, with my own grandmother and and from other people around the that's country. That's a bit the second. November the 2nd now, of November all yeah where I think it's a common thing all over the country from the north to the south from Donegal down to Cork people would leave little candles in their windows to welcome the souls of the dead back in so that was uh, that's the thing that, would, that would, would go on still you'd probably find it in towns and cities as well um, but I know that Lovely recordings I found only only recently in the summer I recorded a woman in Clonmel, and like the same stories my granny had, where they would leave the door open, to leave a little fire light, and to leave a little basin of water and a little towel for the souls to come in to wash themselves, get a bit of food, and leave again. And that was that was practiced again. This woman said that was practiced until the, probably the 50s, 60s, I'd say. Really, and yeah. that's your own relatives, my own. is it? Your the souls of your own relatives you're wel- welcoming yeah. back. It's yeah. not just. Any old soul passing by is it? Yeah. Is that the idea that yeah. it's your family? You're yeah, your really family, which is lovely. It's lovely. I, I still do it, even though I'm not uh, mad religious, whatever. I still do because I like the idea of lighting, light, leaving the candle there. You know, it's a nice, it's a nice thing to do. And tell me a bit more about the exhibition. What would people see in the National Library today? It's a, uh, it'll be a, a, a series of talks run from around from ten till four, four thirty, and there are four kind of very specific areas. One looking at debt, and, debt, and um, debt, debt customs. One looking at apparitions and sightings. The other one looks at meals and mischief around Halloween, and the other one looks at role playing the skies are four very particular uh, topics and uh, basically there's a lovely mixture of academia and also real people in the sense of real people people who actually still practice and believe this stuff like we're bringing up a group of five older people from Wexford that I would have recorded people in their 70s and 80s that when I asked them to, to describe what they do they said Asher just put us down as agricultural that'll do you know <laughs> <laughs> but, and they'll talk a little about what they know of Halloween and how yeah. they celebrate and that's, that'll be the day it'll be a lovely informal day where you'll have people who would lovely you know, increase their McCarthy uh, Robbie Sin and people will have this wider knowledge of, of the whole bigger tradition within Ireland but then you'll also have people who will say listen hang on I do this still you know that kind of way so yeah. it's a lovely way of bridging those gaps and joining dots Another interesting thing um, you were saying to me earlier actually is that it used to be adults who went out who got dressed up and went out knocking on doors it was never kids until much more recently Yeah um, again only recently look my own mother again in the area where we grew up on the east coast of Wexford was a uh, only, only, yeah, only the adults went out and in the early 50s my mother said they started to go out whatever but really the, when the adults went out it was really a chance to for again role play in disguise where you dress up men would dress up as women you know you went around you'd call to a neighbour's house you you caused divilment you, you know there was also a great thing around Halloween where there was a, it was a, there were no rules there was a, I've come across a lot of people who said who told me that uh, sure you can do anything on Halloween night there was a kind of a little period where you could get away with stuff what you know? kind of things well, well, well gate lifting was well, well devilment was one where you'd call and where you'd come to people's houses you'd let out their animals because the animals would be brought in on the night you'd simple stuff like that you'd smoke out pe- people's chimneys you know, put bags over their fire uh, over their chimneys um, you would come in you'd take called cannon you'd take barn brack you'd grab people and you'd, you'd, you'd bring them up for a dance or you'd take children outside run outside with children just messing and acting to Egypt really you know? a night of kind of wildness a little bit of wildness yeah um, and that seems to be the kind of trait that runs through Ireland, runs through Scotland. The Isle of Man was the same as well. Um, and, and this thing, gate lifting, you mentioned there, yeah, was that? That's a kind of class. It was a kind of any kind of country person will kind of uh, will remember gate. Well, they should remember gate lifting. It was basically where you'd rob uh, uh, Murphy's gate with Doyle's gate and swapped or swapped them over, you know. And the kind of theory was, well, some people said it was just devilment, but more people said it, said it was the idea that you would fool the evil spirits. So, so more come, to attempts to confuse the yeah, spirits. Yeah, that's the kind of a theory anyway behind it. Yeah, there's so much in it, isn't it? That's, so that's underway in the national library today 10 to 4.30 as you say so it's, it's already started but uh, thank you very much indeed for coming into us Michael and uh, and th- th- those talks they're free are they? They're all free yeah Great Lovely. Thank you Thanks a million Today with Sean O'Rourke on RTE Radio 1